everybody, it's Pam. I decided to jump on just for a few seconds and show you a new product that I've been working with. This is called Brush Stroke Paper from Advantage. And what it is is paper that you can practice brush strokes on. And as the paper dries, the brush strokes disappear. So it's kind of like an etch a sketch for artists. It's a handy tool to use to practice and try things out before you put it down on your actual watercolor paper. So I'm going to switch over to my workstation and just show you how this product works. So this is called brush stroke paper and it's put out by a company called Art Advantage and I will leave the link in the comments so that you can find it if you're interested in giving it a try. It's, it's not very expensive. It's only a few dollars for a couple of sheets. And there are different kinds that you can buy. I think some are actually mounted on a hard board. Um, this particular one is just about, you know, it's about the thickness of regular watercolor paper. And um, so I taped a little piece of it down on my board. And you just use a brush and clear water. And what will happen is you can practice on it and then as the paper dries, the brush strokes will disappear and you can have another go using the same sheet of paper. So if I were going to lay in, let's say, you know, I'm working on my boat scene and I want to lay in some mountains and um, back, you know, a background wash, I would just take my brush, load it up with clear water you want to make sure it's clean so that you don't leave any residue on your paper. And I'm just going to lay in some mountains here. And here's our foreground water. Um, you have to work kind of quickly with this because, as I said, as, it, as the paper dries, it will disappear. So you can't um, fool around with it for too long or you'll lose your your images but it's a good way to um, try out new brushes or just practice your your brush strokes okay and this one I just used my scroggy loose goose and you can see that this brush can lay down some very thick lines but it can also be used as a rigger to lay down some very thin lines so if I were going to use going to paint a boat and put my boat in my shadows for the boat here's a little bit of the the sails and then I want to put in some reflection lines so I'll change over to my fan brush and just give it a quick sweep and that's um, a new technique for me uh, in making reflections on the water, I usually use just a number six round with a good point on it, uh, or a brush like this. This is a num well, this is a number six round, and I, I used to make my reflections like this with the number six round, but I have discovered just by playing around with this paper that I can make reflections using a fan brush. So, and I actually like the way these reflections look a little bit better than I, um, than when I used my, my round brush. So you can, you know, just experiment with this paper and you can see it's starting to dry. So my image is starting to fade, but I can see, okay, what would happen if I took my fan brush? and used it to lay in the bottom of a mountain range. So I can see, wow, you know, a fan brush can make some interesting marks on my paper. Okay, wow, that fan brush, that would make a great fence line. So I'm learning some new things. This is so exciting. It's a great tool that I've had in my closet for quite some time and just never got around to getting it out and playing around with it. So let's 
get a flat and see what we can do with a flat brush. Okay, if I want to put some buildings in the background here, here's my mountain range. Maybe I want to put a line of buildings in here. Interesting shapes. Okay. So if you were getting ready to put something into a painting you're working on, you can come right over here to your paper to your paper and practice the shapes or the strokes that you would like to use. I think this is going to be an extremely handy tool in the future and I think it will end up having a permanent place at my workstation. If you want to practice, let's say you want to practice putting in some figures into your painting and you're not quite sure about the perspective. Okay, so here's our, we can have a little bridge here and um, if you want to have some people walking on the bridge no, I can see that that is not going to work that's going to be a little bit too big let's see let's put in let's define our walkway a little bit more and So you can see, um, sometimes by putting in figures, it can establish the size of things. So if this is the size of my, of my figure, it kind of gives you some perspective on the size of your scene and the size of these mountains in the background and so forth. Okay, that's not a very good figure. Let's see, this one over here will be a little further away. So it should be smaller. You can practice the shapes of your shadows for different things. Um, something I was practicing this morning is I took my rigor and um, trying to get a more realistic look to grasses that I use a lot in foregrounds in my painting. So I'm going to hold the rigor pretty far back on the handle and just tap and that gives me more of a controlled spatter and you can experiment with where you hold your brush and what effect it will make if I tap my brush against my finger it, it'll give me a different shape and then I can practice my strokes. I hope this was helpful and thanks for tuning in and watching with me. Um, uh, the link to the paper will be in the comments below and please feel free to drop a comment or ask a question if you like. Have a great day and happy painting.